Hi, I'm Miss Marcy, and you are listening to Conversations with Miss Marcy podcast. If you are looking for watered down conversations, this might not be the podcast for you. I'm just saying. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Miss Marcy. I am Miss Marcy. I hope everyone is doing fine this week. I am having a productive week. I really am. Had a great weekend. Um, and the weekend is actually on its way again. The week went by fast as hell. So if this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much for stopping by. And to my continued listeners and supporters, thank you. And to each and every one of you, you could be listening to any podcast, but you choose to listen to this one. So for that, I do appreciate you. So yeah, like I said, um, this week went by fast, man. We already like at the end of the week, at the end of the week. And, um, yeah, you know, so I'm feeling pretty good. Um, like I said, I had a pretty good weekend last weekend. Busy as hell. I, I, I needed to take a nap like so bad because, um, I went to sleep late. Like I went to sleep at about four, maybe like four or something in the morning. And then I had to turn around and get up and run some errands or whatever. You know, take care of some bees and this. Take care of some bee, some bees wax. And, um, you know, just kind of get some stuff taken care of. And I thought I was going to have time for a nap in between. But I ended up not having time for a nap. So I was really kind of pissed about that. For real, for real. So anyway, before I go into further, let me get into today's reflection. It is... No matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, and never give up. And that's what I had to do. Even though I wanted to take a nap last Saturday, I got up, had to get dressed, blah, 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 and get on by my business. So anyway, so that was that. All right, so let me see. Let me talk about this first. So y'all know... P Valley is back, baby. So I went down to the pink, okay? Now, let me say this. We've been waiting. It's been like almost two years now. Yeah, it's been about two years. Because, yeah, when P Valley came, it was summer of 2020 because that was the summer of the COVID. And that was when me and my girls would get together and, you know, at my house or whatever. We'd do like a little P Valley watch party, whatever. I throw some wings in the air fryer and we have our little wine and shit and be sipping and shit and watching it. It was cool. We all lived in the same, um, you know, we all were living in the same, um, uh, building or whatever. So, you know, it was just cool. You know, at that time, we, well, nobody really going nowhere. You know, was too, was too afraid to be around so many people. So it was actually fun having our little P Valley watch party or whatever. But anyway, so it's been pretty much two years. And what I will say is, I mean, I'm glad for the return, but that first episode, ah, oh, eh, it gotta get better. I mean, I, I, I'll take it because maybe it was like an introduction or whatever, and it's just kind of setting it up. But I said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. I hope it don't do like Empire, meaning... The first episode, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. The first season was hot, like hot, like fire. And so because it, because, because it was such a hot, um, first season, it was so just, just, just lit. I just hope that the second season don't come back because it's so anticipated. I hope it doesn't come back with the actors and actresses overacting and they doing too much in the storyline to where the storyline gets stupid as fuck and it loses its authenticity. And that's what Empire did to me. Because the best part, the best season of Empire was the first season. That season was everything. And it's because it was so fucking authentic. Like, it was very authentic. It, when it got to season two, they had all these celebrity guest appearances and stuff. And I don't like shows or movies with too many celebrities in it. I just don't. It, to me, it takes away from it. Like, I don't need to see, you know, and I know Empire was based around you know, um, a music record label, but I still, I didn't like that. All the, the celebrity guest appearance that it just turns me off of a show and a movie, just too many. So hell, that was part of the problem with, um, coming to America too, which that wasn't the only problem. The problem is they should have never did a coming to America too, but 
that was the problem with that too. They had too many fucking celebrity guest appearances. It's just it's a turn off. So anyway, so Pete Valley first, uh, the second season, the first episode premiere, the the premiere. I thought the episode was kind of lackluster. I just mm, it, it's got to get better, man. Hopefully it gets better. So um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, speaking of um, last weekend. So, I actually went to go see Tony Rock. He was here at the Funny Bone, and he was so damn funny, okay? He was funty hunty, okay? And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, Yeah, he. but I've seen him before, actually. I've seen Tony Rock um, probably about a couple years ago. He came here. He was funny as shit then. Now, and see, at that time, I didn't, you know, I really hadn't, I really wasn't familiar with Tony Rock's work. Um... I just, um, I just knew that he was Chris Rock's brother. So I just really didn't think, you know, I didn't think much of it. But when I seen him a few years ago, I was like, damn, he was funny as hell. So when I knew he was coming this time, I, you know, we, we end up, you know, we went to go see him or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I got to go see him. So we went, he, we had a really good time. And, um, he, um, he put on a good show. He did. He put on a really good show. Um, but, um, yeah, anyway, so, speaking of Tony Rock, so, Miss Jada Pinkett, honey, you know, you can't talk about the Rock family right now without talking about the damn Will Smith Oscar slap, okay? So, Miss Jada, toxic ass, Miss Toxic as Jada, she uh, finally spoke on the shit, you know, because she done brought back her Red Table Talk or whatever, which they only talking about, like, serious stuff. It's, like, just so serious as a heart attack type of shit. So she did an episode where she's talking about um, alopecia or whatever. Uh, the the episode was about, I guess, some some lady, some female, I mean, some woman had, you know, had, had alopecia and she died or something like that. She's basically trying to bring awareness to alopecia, which I thought that was some manipulative shit or whatever. But anyway, um, before she got into the segment, she spoke on the Oscar slab and this is what she had to say. I'm going to read this. So she said, now about the Oscar night, my deepest hope is that these two intelligent, capable men have an opportunity to heal, talk this out and reconcile, she said on the show. That's what she said on the show. The state of the world today, we need them both. And we all actually need one other. No, she said, and we all actually need one other more than ever, one another that's a typo on their part, okay? That wasn't me. And she said, until then, Will and I are continuing to do what we have done for the last 28 years, and that's keep figuring this thing called life together. Girl, bye. People were not here for that shit. It was, to me, she just kind of glossed over it. First of all, you didn't even need to speak on it. I mean, you should have just not even spoke on it. And if you want to talk about alopecia, talk about alopecia. And and my thing is, I said there's some manipulative shit because it's like, you want to try to make it seem like alopecia is like a fucking death, death, death uh, sentence. You know what I'm saying? It's people that got alopecia and they living with it. Like, she is bad for business. She really is. I know that's his wife and everything, but she is bad for business. You know, like I said... She should have just not even spoke on it. Or if she was going to speak on it, she should have gave more than that. You know what I mean? That was just like some old, let me just go ahead and say something. Again, I just think that she does stuff like she's not even, she does stuff on her own too much. And I, I'm all about a woman being, you know what I'm saying, having her own identity and things like that, even if she's married or whatever. I get that. I'm all for that because I believe as a, I, I believe I will be that kind of woman too if I get married. I, I need to have my own identity. But at the same time, you want to do stuff, you know, in, 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 in unison with your husband. And I mean, I'm not sure if her and Will had a conversation and he said, okay, yeah, go ahead and talk about it, whatever. I don't know. But that was just stupid. I I, I think her whole statement didn't even, it just wasn't even necessary. If you're not going to really talk about it, then don't even, even, don't even really don't talk about it. You know, she never held herself accountable. Of course not. Because I'm not saying, now I'm not saying that Will, she made Will slap you know, Chris Rock, but it was still because of her that he went and did it. We didn't see that she tried to stop him either. So I just, to me, it was just like some bullshit to say, like she felt like she had to hurry up and speak on it or whatever and say something since she was having a show about alopecia 
or whatever. And, you know, like I said before, you know, when the stuff first happened, I don't even think everybody knew she had alopecia. You know, so it's like, it was just, it was just some extra shit. But, uh, I read since then that, um, Chris Rock is not here for it. And I don't blame him. I won't be here for the shit either. Um, during his, uh, stand-up, Tony Rock said that, you know, the whole family is fine. You know, he said that Chris is fine. You know, because Chris still making money off the ship. His shoulders are selling out. I'm sorry, I'm eating these grapes. Mm. His shoulders are selling out. He doing good. But, um, um, yeah, I don't see them reconciling. Reconciling what? I wouldn't reconcile shit if I was Chris Rock. I would sue the fuck out of y'all if I was Chris Rock. That's what I'd be doing. But reconcile, reconcile what? Will did what he did and he meant what he did. There's nothing to reconcile. Y'all just stay away from me and I'm going to sue the shit out of you guys. And that's that. That's that. But we're going to go ahead and keep our distance. Don't come talk that peacemaker shit. Don't come talking that, oh, we need them both. You know, both of them are iconic men. True. But don't talk that stuff like, you know, I mean, don't talk that stuff like any of that was Chris, Chris's fault. I don't believe it. none of it was his fault. Your man, your husband didn't have to respond the way he did. You know, and, and protecting her. I, and I got so tired of people talking about, he was protecting his wife. He was protecting his wife. That shit got on my nerves, for real. Mm. Let me say this. I'm a person who, I don't mind people having a different opinion than myself. I'm not, I'm not so high strung on my opinion that I feel like, you better agree with me, especially if you come on my podcast, you better agree with me. No, I'm not like that. I actually welcome different opinions. I think we all should have different opinions. But one thing, for some reason, when it came to that situation, when it came to the whole Will Smith, the Oscars, the the um, slap heard across the heard around the world, when it came to that, I only saw that as one way, and that was Will was wrong. And if anybody disagreed with that, I had a problem with them. I'm not going to lie. I was damn near falling out with people behind that. Because <laughs> that shit, I feel like that is, that is no gray area. How can you not see that that was wrong? Even, even, I know like when it came to like Donald Trump, some people had a problem with people voting for him. And you know, some people had a problem with Trump supporters. And I guess I felt like that about this whole Will Smith thing. Like, how can you not see that it was wrong? How can you have another opinion? How can you have another opinion? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that ain't gonna lie. That's one time I was them. I was them to ready to follow up with people. And people who, who, who agreed with the slap and thought the shit was cool, I was giving them the side eye. Like, oh, you must like drama. You must be toxic like Jada's ass. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have thought like that, but I'm just keeping it real. I thought like that. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, she just tried to use manipulation, I feel, you know, I just, I wasn't here for it, I didn't think it was genuine, you know, I just, yeah, girl, bye, you could have just kept that to yourself, and Vivica Fox held her feet to the fire, honey, they said Vivica got on there, mm-hmm, um, she was, you know, Vivica was hosting, um, um, Wendy Williams, you know, and, um, with the, with the one guy, I can't think of his name, but she said it. She was like, you know, she said she just felt like it should have been more said. Basically saying the same thing I'm saying. Like, she, like, girl, bye. But, you know, Vivica got emotional and stuff. You know what I'm saying? People was going in on Vivica. Like, she doing too much. She crying. She being all extra and shit. But I guess she would get emotional because, you know, outside of all this, you know, Vivica knows Will and Jada personally. I mean, you know, she's worked with both of them. She worked with Jada on Set It Off. Worked with Will Smith on, um, was it, Independence Day or something like that? So it's like she knows these people. She has a relationship with them. So I guess she felt like um, Jada needed to be held to task. You know, like, bitch, like, you was part of this shit. You ain't even take none of the blame on yourself. You ain't even take accountability accountability for your part because you played a big part in this shit. Um, That's another thing. You know, I can respect friends that don't mind holding friends accountable. You know, I I can't say when people sit back and be like, oh, you know, that's my friend. And they, you know, it's like, yeah, that's your friend. But you can also be honest when your friend is wrong. Your friend is wrong. You know, hold your friend accountable. And that's what's wrong with some people. They have too many people around them that don't want to, you know, correct their ass or, you know, hold them to task, you know. But, um, 
So yeah, that's what she had to say. That's what Jada had to say. Whatever. And you know, like I said, it just I don't know. It just it didn't really move me one way or the other. Okay. But anyway, so. What else I wanted to say? Okay, so Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan, honey, they done had a breakup. Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. Now, first of all, if you let me tell it, honey, these two motherfuckers was never together. They were never together. Like, for real, like, even going back to when they, when they first got together, I, me- I remember um, everybody was all over the internet, like, oh my gosh, she begged Michael B. Jordan. Oh my God, Lori begged Michael B. Jordan. And like, you know, like he was just this, like he was this Oscar himself. Like he himself was the Oscar. But I guess it was because, you know, Michael B. Jordan has a prestige, um, he has a prestige image. You know, he, um, um, you know, he is, um, I'll look for him to get an Oscar someday too. But, um, you know, he has a, a mystique about him. Nobody really knows his business like that, you know? And, um, women were, you know, he's, I think he was deemed as the sexiest man or whatever, alive or whatever at one point. I think one of the magazines named him that. And, um, he, you know, he's an A-list actor or whatever. He, you know, so, you know, women was shit. On Michael B. Jordan, and but there was a thing of him being only into white women or whatever. So my personal belief is, I I thought this relationship was a fucking PR relationship anyway. I don't think it was nothing for real. I I never aesthetically, yeah, the two look good. They look real good together aesthetically. They look good as hell together. But I'm a, a person that reads body language, and and I remember um when. when when they first came out, you know, when they made it uh, Instagram public or whatever, when they first came out, um, it's like they was doing too much. Like you could just tell now it's like, okay, yeah, y'all doing this to prove something or y'all doing this for PR purposes or whatever. Y'all, a lot of times, you know, in that business, in that industry, a lot of shit is done for, you know, uh, optics, you know what I mean? So for instance, like I said, Michael B. Jordan was known for dating white women. Well, Michael B. Jordan had to gain, um, the respect and the, you know, the love, um, from that black women. So what better way to do it than to get with a black woman, a beautiful black woman at that, you know, at the time, you know, Lori, well, you know, Lori is, she's a, a elite or whatever amongst the, you know, in the, in the Instagram world, especially. And then she's known for dating the likes of future Diddy, uh, you know, shit like that. J- uh, Justin, uh, what was Justin? Yeah. Diddy's son, Justin and a few other people, child. So, She's the hot girl, and she's young, she's beautiful, you know what I'm saying? She's hot. Nobody ever hears from her either. We don't even know what the fuck she sounds like, for real. <laughs> she don't do interviews. We just see her. She's like a model. She's just seen and not heard. But, um, <laughs> I don't really consider her a real model, for real, for real. Like, mm, she's an Instagram model, as far as I'm concerned. She's a real pretty girl, but she's an Instagram model. But anyway... So I think that they both did it for each other. You know what I mean? Like she, she had to clean up her little image. Cause she was, like I said, she was attached to the likes of future with his, um, baby mama drama self having ass. You know what I mean? So to me, I think that, well, first let's look at it like this. Lori Harvey is under the Steve Harvey brand. Okay. Steve Harvey is a brand and his brand consists of the wholesome, the wholesome, you know, carry before you, no, 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 marry before you carry, um, you know, act like a lady, think like a man, and just that wholesome look, the whole blended family, and we are all as one, a united front, and things like that, so, of course, when she was dating someone like Future, that wasn't a good look for the Harvey brand, not at all, Steve never commented on her relationship with Diddy, her relationship with, um, with, um, Future, none of that, but it wasn't a good look, but then all of a sudden she get with Steve, she get with Michael B. Jordan. Now he's commenting, "Oh, I'm trying not to like him, but I can't help it. I like him. I like the guy. Yeah, you like him because he he looks good for your brand. I mean, he's a good look for your brand. Michael B. Jordan, like I said, he's an A-list actor. You know, like yeah, he looks he fits under the Steve Harvey brand way better than a Future and a Diddy or whatever. So yeah, I just think that it was overall just a marketing situation anyway and they said that um one of the blog sites uh, posted saying that oh um they had they had some i think they had pictures of Lori's real boyfriend not the boyfriend she dates for um for business <laughs> for business purposes 
<laughs> but they had pictures of her, her real boyfriend. But yeah, so it's just crazy. Um, I'm not surprised at this. I don't think they were ever really together. And they never, you never saw them kiss. She had more of a, a passion to me for future than she did for this, for Michael B. Jordan. Like they just never looked, just body language just never was on point. They just looked like they was doing stuff for the gram. And I think that from what I've heard, you know, you know, on the blogs and stuff, Michael B. Jordan is really more of a private guy who he's not really into the whole social media stuff. Not when it comes to his, his, personal love life, you know, and, and Lori Harvey is all about that social media life. She is. And, and that's really, to me, I think it's bad when social media is such an influence in people's relationships. Some people, you know, they do get caught up in image really, really bad, especially if their life or their brand and their money comes from social media. It's like they got to post stuff every few hours or every few days or whatever. You got to post this, you got to post that. But to a person, that shit can be annoying. The real deal, the real talk, the real, the reality of it is this, social media and all this stuff, this is really not, it's really, I think, I think it has side effects because it's really not, um, what humans are supposed to be consuming. It's really not. It's what we consume, but we really aren't supposed to because that's not, you know, the the things that, the, the, the type of behavior that social media creates is really not what we're supposed to be focusing on and what we're supposed to kind of be like consuming. Like just for instance, just the whole, um, like I said, just being obsessed with posting and, becoming just obsessed with yourself and, and, um, just, just, you know, just falling in love with yourself in, in a, in a, in an unhealthy way and always posting and, um, you know, you got these followers and people, people, um, idolize you. And I mean, just think about it. None of that stuff is really healthy for us. It's not, you know, you, you shouldn't have to look for, uh, validation through social media and things like that. I'm just saying like none of this stuff is healthy. I think all this stuff comes with side, side effects because it's not really for the human. It's not really human, human for us to be, you know, y'all know what I'm trying to say. But anyway, so I can only imagine that being with someone who has to obsess with social media, that shit would get on my nerves. That would get on my nerves so bad. Like, oh my God. I actually have known couples who actually have gotten into arguments and, and shit because uh, one of the one of the persons is highly obsessed with social media and the attention that comes with it. So the other party, the other person in the relationship is not into it. So they get into it because it's like, oh, why you don't want to post this? Why you don't want to post that? What, you ashamed of me? Or, oh, you got something to hide? Oh, why the world can't know? Like, that's fucking crazy to me. That is so crazy. But it happens. It's, it's a real thing. People be literally, like, having trust issues because of social media. Mm-mm. So, yeah, I just think that uh, Michael B. Jordan is too... And he's older, you know? He's like, I think, what is he, 35? She's 25, he's 35. And it's like, they're in two different places. I just don't think that Lori Harvey is really trying to settle down like that. You know, she's a pretty girl. She wants to use that pretty to her advantage, honey. I remember an episode of the Steve Harvey show, his talk show. Lori and his son, Winton, were supposed to be going off to college. I remember that. And I don't think Lori ever went. I know Winton, I think Winton graduated or he might be still in college. He might be in his last year. He should be graduated by now. But Lori was supposed to have gone off to college too. I guess Lori said, fuck that college life, honey. She all about that Instagram life. Cause, um, she ain't, yeah, she ain't, she didn't finish going to college. She went ahead and started doing Instagram shit. But anyway, so yeah, I, like I said, I don't believe the relationship was ever a thing. I just think that, and I just think that people get too caught up in the image of these celebrities, like too caught up. And like I said, their relationship was never believable to me. I was never into it. I didn't follow the shit. Like I said, when they first came out, I thought they looked good together, but I was just like, no, nah. some people were saying that they got gay vibes from J J uh, Michael B. Jordan or whatever. That was another thing. A lot of that was to, to dispel some of those rumors like, Oh, he's gay or, Oh, he likes, he only likes white women. He don't like black women, you know? So it had to be where we have to be aware of marketing manipulation out here. And that's part of what that was. 
there is a few couples that I don't believe. I mean, I ain't gonna say I don't believe, uh, but the 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 other couple that I that I kind of just don't even really pay attention to. I think they're a beautiful couple, but I don't really pay attention to is Sierra and Russell Wilson. Um, I, I think they're beautiful, and I do think that you know, I think that Russell is a loving, sweet man. However. I wouldn't be surprised if Sierra not even really into him all like that. I'm serious. Like, I'm so for real. I thought she had that fire for future, honey. She had that fire for future. But we all know future is a fucking breeder. Like, he's a, just a, oof, yuck. But, um, he want them dudes. I wouldn't even get him the time of day. He's somebody... <laughs> He one of them dudes. I wouldn't even want nobody to know I fuck with him. If I was to mess with a future, he one of them dudes I would fuck on the low low and won't tell nobody. And damn sure wouldn't let myself get pregnant, honey. No, 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 no. He's one of them. Like, I wouldn't even, mm-mm. I wouldn't even want to, mm-mm. Especially if I had a brand, I wouldn't even want to be attached to the likes of him. Oh, no. My gosh, no. But anyway, so, um, but yeah, so, but Sierra had that thing for him. She really did, but... I think that Russell is a safe bet for her. He's set because sometimes people give with people out of them being safe. You know what I'm saying? Some people be like, you know what? I'm gonna give with it because it's hard out here. Don't get me wrong, it's hard out here. So it's like some people get with people because oh, you know what? This person is going to. I'm not, I'm not going. I think I think the whole situation with Future was humiliating for Sierra. I do. I think it was humiliating for her. Um, but I think that Sierra is a person who kind of is kind of caught up in the image as well of things. Um, because one of the things I remember that, um, I remember future did an interview and they said that he, um, uh, the re- one of the reasons why him and Sierra didn't get married was because they could not agree on the wedding that they wanted to have. So she was more so wanting the A list star studded ass wedding, and he wouldn't he he didn't care for that because you know Future is a hood nigga. He hood as fuck, and he said he wanted people at his wedding who he knew for a fact cared about cared and loved cared and loved him. He really wasn't into the whole you know just the whole celebrity appeal. You know what I mean? So I could see that, and so with with knowing that. And and it's like just looking at how Sierra and Russell Wilson seem. They just seem too perfect to me. And people be steady like, I, I want Sierra's whole prayer. I need the whole prayer. You know, you just never know. She might not even be into him like that, for real. Like, she might really just be with him. I'm not saying she don't care for him, but she might just, I mean, she might like the fact that he makes her look good. He, he, I mean, women envy what she has and women want what she has so bad. She might like that attention. She might really like that. I, I'm telling you, like, cause you can't tell me they'll never have arguments or no shit like that. I mean, every time you see them, it's always a good, cute moment. No, that's not fucking reality, man. That's not reality to me. <laughs> I'm not saying that they can't get along, but I'm just saying, just come on. Y'all never have an argument. Like, I mean, for real. I, Cause I bet you she do some shit that's annoying. I like see her. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, I just, I just don't think nobody's that fucking easy going. And I always say this: if you in a relationship and you never have disagreements or you never have an argument, somebody's living a fucking lie. Somebody in that relationship is fucking lying. Okay, somebody is fucking lying. Somebody's just going along to get along. And I don't know. That just ain't reality to me. I I, I noticed I don't really pay Sierra and Russell Wilson no attention. I noticed that too. And I'm not a hater or nothing like that, but I just don't look at them like they're, mm, they just don't seem realistic to me. Mm. Anyway. So yeah, so that's that on that. Mm, 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 mm. Now let me talk about this ugly ass Monique and DL Hughley drama. Honey, this shit is getting uglier and more more and more ugly by the day. Okay? So it started out, you know, like we all saw, Monique and D.L. Hughley was doing a comedy show out in Detroit. It was said that D.L. Um, pulled Monique from being the headliner. Y'all know the headliner is the person who goes last, you know, so that anybody, mm, per, any persons, you know, before that person is considered more of the opening act or whatever, whatever. So Monique said that she uh, was told that DL told somebody, he, he told the producers like, look, if she go on last, I'm not going on at all or whatever. And so when she got on stage to do her set, you know, she ended up, he, I, he ended up pulling her from being last. 
She said her contract said that she was supposed to be last. She was, she was supposed to be the headliner. He he's saying that his didn't say that his contract said he was supposed to be the headliner, whatever. Well, anyway, Monique ended up being, you know, before him, which made him the headliner. So when she got up there and did her set, she went in on him. She started out going in on him, like literally going in on him, talking to him and his wife, his family talking about, um, I feel sorry for his wife because she got to stuck the dick of a coward, calling him a coward, calling him bitch ass niggas, talking about, yeah, I heard this bitch ass nigga said, if I go on, he not going like she was going the fuck in, okay? And then mind you, he had to get on after her and he had to follow up, you know what I'm saying? And do his act, whatever. Mm, 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 mm. So, you know, they got to going back and forth on social media. Like, you know, but show your receipt, show your contract, show this, show that. And so basically overall, I think the DL handled it in a classy way. Um, I feel like, you know, matter of fact, when we was coming from the comedy show, we were talking about it. And I feel like Monique is handling this all wrong. I feel like Monique, you just got back on the scene you know what I'm saying? Like, you're making yourself look like the drama queen that they say you are to be, you know? Um, my thing is this. I feel like I don't care if I'm first or last. If I was a comedian, I don't care if I'm first or last. I feel like, shit, as long as my coins are the same, I don't care. You know, I don't care who's first or who's last, but I know y'all better rock this at the drop of a dime, baby. <laughs> shit. For real, I wouldn't care which order I had to go in as long as my coins is in order. So, I just think that this um, situation, like like Lou Nell said, this is ego-based. That's all it is. It's all about ego. Like, well, you know, like she said, the DL, like Monique said, she said, you know, I closed. She said, you open for the kings of comedy and I closed for the queens of comedy. It's ego. It's all ego. For real. So, mm -mm -mm. mm-mm-mm. But here's my point. Here's where it really got ugly. Here's what I didn't like. And I like Monique. I think she's funny as fuck, but she's very talented. Ooh, mm. And 50 Cent just signed her on for the um, part of Goldie on BMF, and I'm so here for it. The BMF series, season two, I enjoy season one. So I am so here for season two. I know Monique is going to kill it. But here's, here's, it makes me, this whole situation makes me wonder, like, well, damn. Hope she don't get mad at 50 and try to fall out with 50. Cause honey, we all know 50 ain't the one. He ain't the one or the two or the three, honey. He ain't the fucking one. And everybody know he the king of petty. But she does look like, you know, if she don't have her way or some, she always, it's like, if she don't get her way, she does this. She, and she, she, she under the guise of exposing the truth, but you look like you just a shit starter. Now, here's what she did that I didn't like. Here's my whole point of all of this. She got on, she, she basically, let me, matter of fact, let me, um, let me go to it. So, she went on her, her social media and posted a video of DL where he did an interview, Okay. He did an interview where he talked about how his youngest daughter was sexually violated when she was younger and how, you know what I'm saying? She came and told him, but he didn't believe her because of who the person was. It was somebody that he was very fond of. So he didn't believe his daughter. So in the interview with Sway in the morning, that's who the deal did the interview. I'm not sure when this interview took place. I don't know if it was like a year ago or two or whatever, but it was a previous interview. And DL's whole point was he talked about how he didn't believe his daughter and how he he has to live with that. So he was taking accountability for that. So Monique uses that interview to talk about how DL Hughley is not in, he's not, um, he doesn't protect, he, he's not a protector of a black woman because he didn't even protect his own child. Okay, here, let me, let me get to it. Hold on. This is not going to air. I said the fucking ain't, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it would. Ten minutes later, five to ten minutes later, the people from Kiss FM and MS Communication yeah. came down, took that tape, said if it airs, you'll never work in radio again. Took it from everybody. Said this better never air. And it did not. And it did not and air. I'm telling you, that's true shit. I swear that on my kids. So, so I know he's powerful enough to make that up. So now you don't think he... So you're telling this story now, 
I told it then. I oh, told it on time. No, no, this is not. No, no. This oh, you, you told it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I swear to God. Yeah, See, yeah. people only hear what they want to hear. Yeah. Like, I, I, I had known this for a long time and said it a long time ago. I remember I was on Tom Jordan's show. He gave me, he's the one that got me my radio show. And I was on his show. Uh -huh. And I told him, don't talk about Mr. Cosby like that. They, they really, they, they have this idea. Like, you can be, like I said, you can be profane. You can be profound. You can, he's a lot of, is he's a humorist. Yeah. He's a benevolent. He's a, you know, he's a humorist. He's a, he's a, a humanitarian. Mm -hmm. He's a rapist. That's the way that, you oh, could be all wow. in. could be all you those. Can, yeah. man, I lived across, I lived next door to a dude, man. He, he was my, he was, he took me to the free clinic. He told me about life. And he also was raping his daughter the whole time and went to jail. So it, it, to me, he's always going to be the dude mm. who, who did, everybody's do it. How come when people do stuff like this, they're always above reproach. Nobody ever believes them. And then it's always a lot of victims. Mm -hmm. And it's always, in, and, and the reason it hits home to me is because my youngest daughter said something that happened to her. And because it was somebody I like, I didn't believe her. Mm. And I, I'll never get that back. She'll <laughs> never, I'm supposed to protect her. And I'll never get that back that she got, she told her father something and he didn't do nothing about it mm -hmm. because it was inconvenient. So I, I could see how that could play. Mm -hmm. right. And there's so many bro, everybody wondering around why women are mad and why people are like that. Look at the, the shit they go through. Yeah. Like when when she said on Color Purple, a girl child ain't ain't safe in the family for the men. That's yeah. fucking true. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just that he is categorically every everybody you ever see is is like priests who are above reproach, or coaches who are above mm -hmm. reproach. Right. Yeah. And teacher. Nobody yeah. teacher. They would never. Why are you somebody's boyfriend? I watch y'all with you. And he played on it. And, he, and to this date, he's never said he didn't do it. <clears throat> it's not going to air. I said the fucking ain't. Right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it would. But 10 minutes, I'm not going to air. I said the So, y'all just heard that, right? So, she said, this is what Monique said. This is based upon DL's own words that you just heard. She said, at the real deal, excuse me. When I said, how can DL's wife suck the dick of a coward? This is what I meant. When my husband and I say we have to fight for the little girls coming up behind us and you see DL didn't believe his own daughter over a friend because he seemingly likes his friend more than he loved his own daughter and didn't want to be bothered by the inconvenient truth. This highlights why the black women isn't believed when she publicly speaks about her trauma. What does the black woman and his dl's black wife have it have coming watch who stands with this man and you're looking at the same ones who will sit down when you our sisters are being attacked i find it funny that dl will call out ice cube kanye rizza islam angela stanton myself etc but he won't call out the name of the person that violated his daughter Ooh, child let me tell you something <clears throat> Monique was wrong as wrong as two left shoes to do that. Um, I, one thing uh, I can't stand a person anyway, who has an issue with a person and then they turn around and they try to hit below the belt and they bring up stuff that has nothing to do with the situation. I actually don't like people like that. I don't, I don't even like dealing with people like that. Those are the kind of people who, like I said, they hit below the belt because they get mad. Now here she is and set up here and brought up his daughter's trauma. That's his family business. That is his family business. Monique had her own trauma that she spoke publicly about. She spoke about her own brother molesting her when she was a child. And she talked about, um, I can't remember if she said her mom believed her or not. I can't believe, I mean, I can't remember if she said her mother believed her or not, but I remember she had an issue with Oprah because Oprah would let her family and the brother, you know, including the brother that did that to her. She let the family come on her show. And that's why Monique fell out with Oprah for all them years or whatever. But who are you to bring up somebody else's family's issue? This is DL speaking on some shit. He didn't even had to speak about I don't even know if if his daughter was comfortable with him talking about it publicly like that. I don't know. But whatever the case, that was a family, you know, family issue, which it sounds to me like he and his family have healed from. But he was just basically saying that, you know, he can never get that back. He, he felt guilty as a father, as a man, for not believing his daughter. Or he didn't want to believe her because, of, like I said, he was fond of the person. Now, 
DL has also come back and said that that person was not a, a friend of his. It was a child. It was the boy was 13 years old, just like his daughter was at the time. Um, but there's so many things wrong with her doing this. Like I said, me personally, I don't really like people who argue dirty like this. If you got a problem with me, don't turn around and bring up some shit that ain't got nothing to do with me and what, what, what me and you are talking about. Don't turn around and, you know what I'm saying, because you mad at me because, um, <clears throat> you mad at me because you didn't like something I said or you didn't like something I did. So you want to go try to attack and bring up, you know what I'm saying, shit that ain't got nothing to do with nothing, you know, shit that ain't got shit to do with shit. Like, oh, yeah, you know, uh-huh. That's why your mama smoked crack, you know what I'm saying? My mama didn't smoke crack, but I'm just saying my mom did not smoke crack, but I'm using that as an example. Like, that's just some low-blow shit that somebody, you know what I'm saying, people do, people would try to do sometimes. Um, Monique has a very dark side to her. Um, I mean, even in her comedy, though, like, I noticed over the years, I've seen Monique a few times, because I like Monique. I do. I like her as a, I think she is funny. She's very talented. But I noticed, like, when I seen her, I seen her for the first time back in 06. And then I seen her uh, probably about mm, 2015, somewhere in there. And I know people are supposed to evolve and their material change, but her shit was more raw and raunchy and just, oof. I was like, oh my. when I seen her years later, I'm like, damn. But this really does not put her in a good light. It doesn't. Because first she was trying to say it was about the contracts and all that kind of stuff. Then she was saying that, okay, it's because, you know, he had said some things about her over the years and she wasn't too, too, you know, too keen on or whatever. She still had an issue with. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? My thing is, if this was the case, if you, if you had an issue with him, why did you sign on to do this show anyway in Detroit with him? Because I think this was a part of, this was DL's, like, something he had going on, and he invited her to do it against his better judgment, he said. You know, that he actually, he said that he actually um, was leery about working with her in the first place because of stuff like this. So, yeah, like I said, you know, who are you to bring up? I don't even think to do that. When I got an issue with somebody, I don't even t think to bring up, like, when it comes to, like, people I know, my friends or whoever, my family, whatever, when I have an issue with something and we have an argument or whatever or disagreement, I don't even think to bring up low blow shit. Like I, if you ever confided in me in something, I'm not going to throw that shit in your face or whatever, or just because I know something about you or whatever. I'm not going to throw it in your face because I'm mad at you. Those are people to me who, I don't know, like people who can't control their emotions, people who just attack and go off like that. Like just, just being low. But DL responded, and I actually, um, you know, I actually think that his response was very classy, but, you know, like I said, this right here does not show Monique in the best light, not at all, like, for real. This is like, um, you know, it's dirty, you know, it's really, really dirty, so it's just like, um... I don't know. I just hope that she, I don't know. I just really hope that Monique gets it together. Um, so this is what he had to say. And I, I, like I said, I thought he responded very, very classy, very classy. And, um, yeah. So let's take a listen. Make your work day easier with Everland. Shut the fuck up. All you have to do is download the free app. That was Faith Evans, you used to love me. So I know that I said that I had done all I could here about this whole Monique situation, but over the weekend, her and her husband released a video um, where uh, it, it, I was doing an interview and I uh, detailed my daughter's uh, sexual trauma. Uh, Monique has taken uh, that video and perverted it for her own use. She's decided to add her own narrative. I will only say this, and I'm answering this now, uh, in response to a request from my daughter who... who of course, over the weekend was crying, of course, having her trauma trotted out in front of the world in a situation she had nothing to do with that doesn't have anything to do with a contract would be traumatizing to anybody, particularly when it's from somebody who claims to love us for real. Um, but she uh, she proceeded to talk about how I let a man touch my child, which nothing could be further from the truth. 
They were both 13 years old. They were boy. They were, they were friends that had grown up together. She told me about it years uh, later. And when she told me about it, I, um, and, and this is something I lament to this day, denied that she, I said, well, you know, that's what kids do. Now, that was my estimation of it. It was not her interpretation of it. She was hurt by that. And I, I will never forgive myself for not, A, believing her and, and B, handling it the way I did. But for Monique, A, to put a man in that room, which never happened, and B, to bring up sexual trauma in an argument that has nothing to do with what you're talking about is unconscionable. My, my daughter Tyler addressed it, my daughter Ryan addressed it with her in a letter. And the thing that I was most proud about in the letter is not only that she held her held high because she's, she's supposed to. The other thing is she said there are legitimate things you could have gone after my father about because my children know exactly who I am. They know, they know that I'm not perfect. They know that I'm flawed. And none of them would have a problem with you assailing things that are really true. But you and your husband putting a man in my daughter's room when that is not what I said and you weaponizing and, and weaponizing and using in a trite argument shows exactly how low you are. You are a monster. You literally are. You didn't play precious. You let you didn't play precious's mother. You let her out. You stopped pretending to be human and you won a role for being exactly you won a grand uh, Oscar for being exactly who you are. Who says they love women and are there for women and protect the babies and would trot out someone's sexual trauma just to use in an argument? I don't know anything about you. I know that what happened to you uh, when you were a child, what happened to you uh, when you were growing up, those things are, 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 are traumatic to you. And I would never bring them up. Never. It would never occur to me to do it because that's not where I live. That's not what I do. You have had this argument or this show be about everything. It was about a contract. It was not. It was about an insult on the radio state uh, on my radio station. The question never aired. You know it never aired, and you continue to have this. And then you have the temerity to answer my daughter's letter with a with, with an invitation to come on my show. I will never let you on my show. Never. We will never talk to my children. I will never have anything to do with me. You do not exist. Maybe leaving my children out of your mouth will leave you room for the food you love so much. Look, you can continue to do whatever you want to me. That is, that is, that is fair game. I'm in this business. For you and your husband to continue to do things like this, you have already, first it was a contract. You've, you've attacked everything. My, uh, the dog, my wife, now my children, enough. Enough. You do not exist to us. You you don't get to break my family. You don't get to do that. I don't know if you ever had a man who loved you as much as I love my children. I don't know if you've ever had anybody who's standing in your stead because the man next to you damn sure ain't doing it. All he's doing is wrecking what's left of the rubble of a career that you're pretending to build, try, but trying to build back. Leave my children alone. Stay with me and we're fine. You are a horrible woman. You love women like Ike loves Tina. Mm. Now, that girl over there, well, I shouldn't call you a girl, this woman over here, you know one thing for sure. I love you. And I'd never let it. And I'm your daddy for real. And you don't have to pay me for it. <laughs> one day, I hope that you're happy and you can stop being such a miserable, low human being. Maybe one day, you will get to be as small as you often act. That's a little note from the GED section. We got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the DL Hubert. Child, oh my gosh. Hey, yeah. I, I, hey, and y'all know, see, DL Hughley, he has to keep it classy too because, and see, now once did he call her no bitch or none of that. Yeah, people's children are off limits. That's where you do not go. You do not start digging into people's you know, issues with their children and all that. And you know, like people were saying, she working with 50 Cent. 50 Cent has had a, a very explosive, um, a nasty back and forth with his own son. Not the, you know, you know, the, I'm talking about the, his, I think it's his oldest son, his firstborn, I think his name Marquise or something like that. And she working with 50. She ain't trying to, because honey, she ain't gonna call 50 out on no shit. She ain't gonna do that. Um, and then like her own son, uh, Monique's own son, Shalom, her oldest son, they have a very strained relationship. She's talked openly about that. 
because um, she wasn't basically, she wasn't there for him like she should have been because she was chasing her dream. So it's like, but nobody's throwing that up in her face. You know, it's just like, I don't know. Like he said, she claims to love us so much, but it's like every time you turn around, Monique trying to call somebody out. And I don't know. It go. It ta- it reminds me of what I was just saying in my uh, previous podcast when I talked about how. Excuse me. When I talked about how those people who swear up and down they positive, swear up and down they positive. Yeah, they do a lot of negative shit, or they always up in negativity. They always up in drama. Look at what she doing. She's being an agent of chaos. She even drugged Steve Harvey into this situation. Says something about him. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, it, it's just messy. And it's like it's getting messier and messier by the day. Like, girl, just shut your mouth. Damn. <laughs> shut your mouth, girl. Shut up. And like I said, she's making, she's turning her fans off. Like she's turning them off so bad. People are like, girl, because she's starting to seem obsessed with him, with DL. I can't believe she went and pulled up that, um, that interview and she's trying to spin a narrative that it's about protecting black women. And that's not what this situation is about. You had an issue with DL. He, I don't like, you know, people like people are scary nowadays. People are fucking scary. You never really know what people's motive is. You know, like, my thing is, like I said, and I say that because she sat up there and, and signed on to do a show with him and then turn around and this is what she's given? I mean, it for real, like, it's just not cool. And you don't bring, I don't believe, you know, you're going to bring his wife and his, you know, just, it's just really, like, just messy. I, like I said, she's an agent of chaos. It's quiet as it's kept. Although she tries to portray this positive image on all about positivity, positive energy, and love, love, love. Like I always tell y'all, the thing that people express the most and they try to, you know, try to, um, the the thing that people try to, um, project, try to say that they are the most, the more, the more they tried so hard to press that. It's like they're usually the opposite. Like, so somebody always talk about how real they are, how real they keep it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're not really as real as they try to portray. People try to always call themselves nice people. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice girl. I'm a good person. I'm a good guy. I'm a good person. They're usually the opposite, man. They are. They are, they are, they are. And this, with this thing with Monique, it proves what I'm saying to be true. Look at this. She, every time you turn around, Monique up in some shit. That's a turn off. Like, girl, you just made up with Lee Daniels. You know? You just made up with him. You, you, you just got the apology from him that you've been wanting. I don't think Oprah said, Oprah said, I ain't giving her shit. Oprah or Tyler Perry, they ain't gave her no fucking apology. And, 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 and the way she's acting, it makes a person feel justified. Like, you know what? She's so difficult. She's so difficult. Well, bitch, don't fall out with 50 Cent because we need that season two of BMF, okay? We need that. <laughs> Shit. Mm-hmm. And see, D.L. Hughley, he has the platform where, you know, the way his setup is, he has, uh, you know, he's more corporate. So he does have to be careful how he addresses this. But I know he boiling boy especially because like he said he didn't even want to work with her in the first place and you know how that feeling is when you second guess yourself when you second guess yourself about something or somebody and then you you don't listen to your better judgment and you go ahead and do it anyway you be so fucking mad oh i bet he felt like that fucking snake got my ass and i know i shouldn't have trusted that bitch i know he felt like that Cause I know I would, I'd be like, Ooh, when you mad at yourself, that, that's a, even that, that, that feeling that feels worse than being mad at somebody else. Cause you'd be like, damn, I know I shouldn't have trusted that bitch. Damn, I shouldn't have trusted that nigga. But yeah, it's just not cool. You know, like I said, I just didn't like the, I did not like the fact that she brought his daughter into it. And then she, you, it's so mean spirited to use somebody's 
trauma to make a point about how you, you know, how you look at somebody else. Look, it's like, it's like, like, look, 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 he ain't, he ain't about protecting black women. Look, look what he put his daughter through. And that's none of your business. That's none of your business. So, you know, I don't know how this is going to pan out, but to me, it just seems like it's getting ugly as hell. And I don't know, Monique might mess around. And Matter of fact, 50 Cent did chime in and he was saying something like, you know, don't, what did he say? Basically, he kind of said what Beyonce said when she say, um, always stay gracious, best revenge is your paper. 50 didn't say that exactly, but he said something along the lines of that. And she do need to take a page out of Beyonce's book, shit. Just now, now Monique known for being fucking messy. Mm mm. Mm mm. Mm mm. It's crazy. But do y'all know people like that though? Like, you know, you get into it with them, like either y'all, whether it be your friend or, you know, just somebody that you're close with or cool with, where if y'all get into a disagreement or argument, they're quick to bring up some other shit. Or they're quick to throw something in your face that you told them in confidence. Or they're quick to throw up something that you got going on in your life that they know is hurtful. People like that, you better be real careful with. You better be careful as fuck. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> you better be careful as fuck what you share with them. You know, because that's, mm-mm, that's not cool. That means sometimes I feel like people like that, they have no boundaries of what they're willing to do when their emotions get out of check. You know, they can't keep their emotions in check. So it's like they're, they have no boundaries of what they're willing to do or say when their emotions start running high and they get so pissed off at you. It's like the gloves come off. You know, I, I, I try to stay away from that because I'm the type of motherfucker. I'm going to I'm the type of person. My gloves can come off too, but I don't like to get like that. You know, I don't like to get like that because I think it's ugly. And I think as you get older, you know, as a person, I think that you should have a mo- little bit more polish about yourself than to let your emotions get the best of you like that. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I can get really mad, really upset, but I still know how to bridle my tongue when it comes to um, people, especially people that I claim to love or, you know, people that I um, uh, care about. You know, we all, when we close with people or, you know, we have, you know, friends and family members we all have things that we know about each other. We all, a lot of times we know where our, where other people, you know, where our other, you know, where our loved ones bones are buried. We know shit about each other. You know what I mean? Like I can tell you, like I can say out of, out of all my friends and, you know, my close family, I know things, you know, that, that they have confided in me in and I know things that they've done that they will probably never tell another soul and vice versa. But it's just like, you don't get mad and then bring shit up. Or you don't bring up shit that they can't help. Or you don't bring up shit that they talked about. He was he was talking and he was, DL did that interview, you know what I'm saying? And he was being transparent. He didn't even have to talk about that. But he did just to show that, hey, you know what? I am a father, but at one point in my child's life, I didn't act as such. I was supposed to protect my child and, I'm, and I dropped the ball. I missed the mark. And that's all he was saying, you know, unbeknownst to him that somebody would turn around years later and use it as a fucking weapon. You don't weaponize somebody else's trauma just to make a fucking point, which really ain't even, it's not even a, it's not even worth it. It doesn't even, you know, it just wasn't even necessary. It wasn't necessary at all. Like you don't do that. So like I said, if you ever know somebody that's like that, man, I'm telling you, I either, you know, don't even fuck with them or you just, you got to watch what you tell them, you know, limit what they know about you. Because like I said, to me, to me, people like that are vicious. They'll, they'll go to no end to humiliate you. They'll go, when you make them mad, it's all about that emotion, not keeping their emotions in check. Now, um, you know, don't get me wrong. I ain't going to sit up here and say that, you know, I haven't got mad at somebody and, you know, went into attack mode. I have, but again, it's certain things I won't say to them and it's certain things I won't bring up. To me, I think it's worse if you're the kind of person who speaks out of anger. Now, I'm kind of talking in general now. 
because what Monique did kind of triggered me to talk about this. Um, it's not often that I have to go back and apologize to people for what I said, because I'm the kind of person I don't believe in speaking out of anger. Meaning, like I said, I don't care how mad I get at someone like a friend or family member or, or whoever, somebody that I love. Now, I don't know somebody I don't know. I might not give a fuck. But a person that I claim to love and care about, um, it's not common for me to get mad at them and just shoot off at the mouth and just shoot off some crazy shit because that's not how I talk. I don't have to get mad to say what I really think of you or how I really feel about you. I don't have to be mad to do it. And I'm going to tell you, that's the worst time to tell somebody what you really think of them. Because let me tell you what that makes me think about. It makes me think about a person who, have you ever known somebody who, um, you cool with them, right? And you may hang out, whatever, whatever. But then may, it may take a year. It may take two years. It may take five years. It may take 10 years for them to, you know, y'all, they, y'all may have one good ass, bad ass argument, you know, and, and then everything they ever thought of you comes out. Yeah, bitch. That's why your motherfucking party was whack as fuck back in 2010, bitch. Yeah, bitch. Or that's why your motherfucking baby daddy don't want your ass, bitch. And and you've been sitting up here talking to this person. You've been sitting up here talking to this girl about you and your baby daddy and how you kind of, you know what I'm saying, you hurt because, you know, y'all done had this baby, but y'all ain't together. He all over there with this other bitch or he got him a new girlfriend and you salty as fuck. I mean, imagine, though, you sitting up here talking to this person and confiding in this person this so-called friend of yours or whatever, somebody you're supposed to be close with. And they sitting up there like, yeah, girl, mm, don't even worry about it, girl. You know what I'm saying? You, you good. Don't even worry about it. He'll come back one and one day. And when he do, you ain't even going to be thinking about him, you know, or whatever, whatever. And then you turn around, y'all get into it. And that same bitch be like, bitch, that's why your motherfucking baby daddy don't want your motherfucking ass. I don't know if I told y'all this story before, but I think I have. I remember when I was in high school, okay, I was in high school and there was these two best friends, right? These two girls, they were best friends, like besties, besties, besties used to dress alike and you know, they were just all like, they were just always together, honey. You saw one, you saw the other one. They were always together and it was just like, you know, yeah, we're besties. He, you know, you know how I mean in high school and shit. And one of them, she was considered, uh, the quote unquote pretty girl she was. And so she ended up getting a boyfriend or whatever. And they became like high school sweethearts or whatever. And they were just like the it couple, one of the it couples anyway. And, um, so her and that best friend of hers, they ended up falling out for whatever reasons. And it was like years later, I want to say by our, they, they became friends. I want to say freshman or sophomore year, but by our senior year, I don't know what the fuck happened, but they asses fell out and it was a bad ass fallout from what it, from what I heard, whatever. Well, anyway, um, I had a class with one of them, had a class with one of the girls. I had a class with the, well, I had a class, I had classes with both of them, but this particular, um, particular comment that I'm about to tell y'all about is, uh, was from the, the one who I said was deemed the pretty one, you know, she was a pretty girl, she deemed a pretty girl, whatever. But, um, and I'm not saying the other one was not pretty. I'm just saying that this one was li- literally deemed as a, you know, a pretty girl, whatever. So, um, we were in class one day and I actually heard her and another young lady talking. Cause mind y'all, like I said, her and the other girl fell out really, really bad. So I heard her and another girl talking and, um, it was just some, some bullshit. So I guess the girl, the, the, the other girl had, the other girl was dealing with this dude or whatever. And he was like denying her, like, no, fuck with her like that. So, you know, we high school, motherfuckers is childish. You know what I'm saying? People do shit like that. You know, he really was fucking with her, but he was saying he didn't fuck with her. And, um, so the, the girl who, like I said, the girl who I had the class with was talking to another young lady about her, you know, her previous ex-friend or whatever. 
and the other girl was like, I'm just going to call this other girl. Let me get these, let me get these girls names. Okay. So the girl, I'll say, I'm going to call her Sharita. I'm just going to call her Sharita. And I'm going to call the girl who had the best friend, I'm going to call her Tiffany. So Sharita was telling Tiffany like she, well, you know, he said he don't fuck with her like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why she claiming that she fuck with him like that because he said he don't fuck with her like that. So Tiffany, mind you, Tiffany is the 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 the, the, the ex-best friend of the girl that they talking about. So Tiffany is like, um, shit, I mean, I wouldn't claim her either. I mean, look at her. <gasps> I was like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. Like, that was your best friend, though, bitch. That's what I'm thinking to myself. Like, <gasps> like I literally uh, almost gasped, okay, in my seat. Like, <gasps> she just basically called her fucking ex-best friend ugly. Like, what the fuck is you really saying? And I never looked at her the same after that. I was like, Ugh, like you sat up there and that was your friend and because you mad at her you don't fell out with her you you really speaking on how you really feel about her and to somebody else at that i was like oh my gosh yeah she was like i mean look at her i mean wouldn't y'all think that that that's she basically was saying that she really always felt like the girl wasn't pretty or whatever i mean that just and I always remember that. And I said, oh, uh-uh. See, you never really know what people really think about you. You know, I know, you know, I don't care if it is your best friend or whoever. You never know what people really think about you. But like I said, it's some thoughts that shouldn't, that just shouldn't come out, you know, just because you're mad, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, like, but you got to watch that shit. You know, like I said, that's why when people get mad, um, you have to listen to what people listen to how people talk, listen to things that they say because they it's like a drunk person. You know, I say drunk people speak their sober tongue when they get mad. Yeah, motherfucker, tell you how they really feel about you when they get mad because you know that adrenaline get to pumping, that the emotions get to going. But then people gotta watch it because sometimes there's some things that you could say. You know, the the tongue, excuse me, the tongue is a, a a weapon of mass destruction. It can be, um. And sometimes there's some things that you can say that you can't go back and say, say sorry for it. Sorry ain't going ain't gonna to cover it up. Because something like that, her speaking on how she really felt about felt about her ex-best friend's uh, uh, appearance, like, was like, oh, so damn. Mm, you know? Ooh. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, so, you know, like I said, you got to pay attention to how people talk when they get mad. It's just certain things that, I mean, I'm an outspoken person. I'm a very blunt outspoken person. I mean, that's the same thing. What the fuck am I saying? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a very blunt person. <laughs> I think I'm getting sleepy y'all. But anyway, I'm a very outspoken person. So, but even me, my outspoken stuff, like I said, there are certain, there's just certain things I would never want a person to know I think about them. I mean, for real. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just being real. Like, I mean, even if I did think somebody wasn't really attractive or they wasn't cute, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, that's one of those things. Cause some, I just wouldn't want them to think that. Now I don't have any ugly friends. Like my close friends, like my friends that like my family, you know what I mean? I, I have pretty attractive people that I'd be around. So I don't, you know, but if, if, but even if, if I didn't, like, even if somebody wasn't attractive or whatever, that, I mean, I don't really, I, I feel like everybody's attractive in their own way. Now, what I call ugly is somebody who you can't put no makeup on them. You can't get their hair done. They can't get their hair done. They can't put on no clothes. Nothing makes them get to pretty. Nothing makes them get to pretty. I don't give a fuck if it's somebody who... If they wear makeup, they look cute. But if they don't have no makeup on, they look a little rough. They look a little, you know, like a, maybe like a different person. I don't even care if that's the situation. If a mother, if a if a woman can put on some makeup, or it ain't got to be, it could be a lot of makeup, or it could be a little bit. If she can go do or get her hair done, put on a nice outfit, and she can look attractive. I don't consider that as somebody that is ugly. Okay, I don't. Okay. So anyway. But anyway, like I said, if there was anybody around me who fit that description, who fit the description of somebody who no matter what you put on them, they just threw booking. Even if I did know somebody like that who was in my circle or whatever, I wouldn't wait till I get, I mean, I just, 
I, that's something I would, I just wouldn't say about them. I don't care how mad I got at them. But anyway, but she said that or whatever. So my point is, um, yeah, I write on my tongue even when I'm pissed off at you because I don't, I, I'm not coming back and saying, I'm sorry. I was just mad or I just, I didn't, I, you know, no, 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 no. Now I might, you know, it, it, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't know. So it's some things you just don't say. So anyway, that's what the whole, what what Monique did. That's what that reminds me of. The situations like that and people that do stuff like that. They get mad and they want to try to go for the jugular. And, and, And I try to stay away from people like that because I'm telling you, that shit can get really ugly. And you're... I don't, I mean, my, my, me personally, I don't even like bipolar ass fucking relationships like that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with people like that. And if, if I see you got it in you to be like that, if I see it in you, I'm telling you either I won't share a lot of things with you or I won't fuck with you, period. Because you're not going to fucking attack me because you got mad at something I did or something I said when I wasn't even being malicious in what I said at that, or you just got, you got high strung in your emotions cause you didn't like what I said or you didn't like what I did. You got high strung in your emotions and you just said fucking, you just start hauling off and spitting venom. Mm-mm. Baby, don't do it. Don't do it because I'm going to tell you what, I know how to spit venom back too. Shit. You know, so, um, you know, and I, I was very proud of DL, like I said, because he kind of held his tongue and I know he wanted to say a whole lot more than that, but you just don't do that. Like he said, keep my kids out of it. Like, you don't bring nobody's kids up in that shit. You deal with him. You know, you deal with him. And I mean, mm-hmm, some people, people are just fucking crazy. Have y'all ever felt like that? I was feeling like that all week. Like people are fucking nuts. Like, people are crazy. Sometimes the things people just, I don't know, just, mm-mm. <laughs> A friend of mine, <laughs> she said she was through with humanity. <laughs> she got mad because, I mean, I don't blame her because this dude called her up out the blue. He called her and um, they started conversating and Somehow they started talking about business ventures because he's a real estate investor. So he started talking to her about possibly investing. And so, you know, they had a, you know, one of them fiery conversations that get you all motivated and pumped up and shit, right? And they was like, you know, they ended the, I said, well, how did the conversation end? She said, we ended by like, shit, let's, let's do this. Let's get this money. So she said, next thing you know, he had told her that they were going to have a meeting with some lawyers. She said the next day, like she didn't hear nothing from him. And not only did she hear nothing from him, but he blocked her. And so she tried to like contact him and he wasn't answering and shit. And then he was just acting dumb about it. Texting her like, okay, so did you change your mind? Like it was just crazy. So she got so fucking upset because she was like, girl, this motherfucker literally had me excited. And then he'll turn around and block me. <laughs> I said, man, people crazy as fuck. People do the weirdest shit. <laughs> people just weird. <laughs> just weird. So, I don't know. But yeah, she cussed him out too, boy. She sent him, oh, nah. He ended up unblocking her. So she sent him a nasty ass text. She knew he blocked her because she said she called from another number and his phone rung and he, <laughs> he answered or whatever. Like, yeah. So, anyway. Mm, 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 mm. People are nuts, man. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all let me know. Like, you know, have y'all ever dealt with somebody like that? Like, how do you deal with people who who you feel like you can't really trust with telling them things about you or whatever. It could be something big. It could be something small. You know, like I said, it could be 
Like you, you know, you told them something that you did that you're not too proud of, you know, or, you know, you told them about something that you got going on in your life that's bothering you, or, uh, you could have told them something about your past or, you know, some, some shit that you, you know, whatever, you know, and they take that as an opportunity when they get mad at you to weaponize it. Ugh, that is ugly to me. It's one of the ugliest fucking things you could do. And that's just my opinion. So, yeah, you got to watch that, though. Some people are evil, just evil. But, yeah, y'all, that girl in um, high school, yes, girl, she said, she basically said her ex-best friend wasn't really cute. She was just like, I mean, look at her. I was, And, and that ain't nothing that you just say because you mad. That's something you really felt. Like, you truly did feel like your homegirl was ugly, for real. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. They're not even friends to this day, I don't think, either. They had a nasty fallout from what I heard. Ooh-wee. Mm. mm mm So, yes, guys. Uh, let me see. Was that everything I wanted to talk about? Um, Dia Hughley's daughter did respond. Not the youngest one, but one of his daughters responded. I don't feel like reading what she said. That shit was long as fuck. Um, Yeah. You know what? Speaking of people getting mad and going over the top and doing crazy ass shit. So I saw this story. Um, at first it started on TikTok where this dude's girlfriend got mad because he cheated on her and he she dumped his mother's ashes. Y'all know ashes like the remains from a deceased person. She threw his mother's ashes in the river. In the river. Okay. Now, who does that? I mean, crazy shit. So really what happened was, so the, the, um, it was a reenactment on TikTok, but the situation originally happened in 2020. And I'm surprised that, um, I hadn't heard about this. I'm surprised that it took for TikTok to really make it come back. I mean, to bring it back up, to have the story resurface. But a woman on TikTok was doing it as a, as a, um, you know, as a little video, or whatever, a, a reenactment. But the actual story came up because the TikTok video went viral. So the actual real story resurfaced. So it happened in Texas. Y'all know what? Texas is kind of, you know what? Let me say this. I hear a lot of good stuff about Texas in terms of people who move there. And they be like, oh, I love Texas. You know, there's always something to do. Da, 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 da. But when I be seeing news headlines, it be some crazy shit coming up out of Texas. It's start, starting to remind me of ratchet ass Florida. Like, for real, I don't know what's up. And I know it's crazy shit that's going everywhere, and I know it's crime that's going everywhere. But Texas is starting to have them fucking bizarre-ass stories like fucking Florida. But anyway, let me get on with this story. So, it says, Texas woman charged with throwing boyfriend's mother's ashes into lake in 2020. So, here we go. That was going to be the article. Anyway, it says, uh, um, a Texas woman has been charged with the abuse of a corpse for a 2020 incident in which she allegedly threw the ashes of her boyfriend's late mother into a lake. Augustine Gladden, Gladney, 40 years old of Fort Worth, was arrested last month after she reportedly admitted her actions to her boyfriend, Ernest Smith. Um, the NBC Dallas Fort Worth reported. So it says, um, Smith, who was 38, told the police back in June of 2020 that he returned home one night to find that the urn containing his mother's cremated remains was missing. According to the Fort Worth, according to the Fort Worth Star Telegram, Smith told investigators he and Gladney were dating at the time, but were not on good terms. Fast forward to May, 2020, when Smith told authorities he overheard a phone conversation between Gladney and her daughter, who was at their home at the time. Um, in that phone call, Gladney allegedly told her daughter she had thrown the urn full of, full of ashes into the lake, a reservoir and recreation area in the city. Smith told the police he was unable to reach Gladney until nearly midnight Monday night. It was apparently around that time that she texted him admitting, admitting that she had thrown his mother's ashes into the water. 
The alleged crime made headlines in May, but appears to have resurfaced. Um, no, the hold on, the alleged crime made headlines in May, but appears to have resurfaced after a TikTok video went viral on social media. The video caption, he cheated, so I threw his mom ashes in the river, shows a woman dumping an, off, an, an urn full of ashes off the side of a bridge. Mm, mm, mm. Um, several people have stated that the woman in the video is Gladney, but other social media users have identified the woman as a comedian performing a skit. BET reported that law enforcement officials have not confirmed whether the video is, th is authentic or not. According to the Dallas Express, Gladney faces a year in prison and a fine of up to $4,000 on the charge, which is a misdemeanor. So, when he said, I don't know, when he said that in May, it said fast forward May 2022, when Smith told authorities he overheard the phone, so he's just now talking about he overheard, so she's just not admitting it this year or whatever. But when he came back home in June of 2020, he returned home, he returned home one night to find that the urn containing his mother's ashes his mother's cremated remains were missing. Um, he, I mean, shouldn't he have known it was her back then? It, I mean, you know, this is a year later. She, I mean, I mean, I mean, she had two, damn near two years later, basically two years later. And, um, he just now overheard a conversation between Gladney and her daughter who was at their home at the time. Uh. Oh, they still he's still together with her. That's what it is. He was still together with her. And that phone call, um, Gladney allegedly told her daughter that she had thrown the f mm, mm, mm. Why the fuck? See, that's what I'm talking about. People get so mad and high strung in their feelings and fucking emotions. Then she gonna throw his fucking mother's urn, his mother's cremations in the fucking river. You know what? I'd have killed that bitch. Okay. She would have we she would have some fucking cre her 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 fucking uh, remains uh, would have been thrown in the fucking like how you gonna do that how you you see what I'm saying people get that mad you know sometimes if people make you get so mad where you gonna say things or do things like you need to just back the fuck up again this is one of them things that sorry can't take care of sorry can't get you out of everything man. I'm sorry for throwing your mother's ashes in a link. I was just so mad that you cheated. It's not even that serious. That's what I'm saying. People crazy. People are just fucking just crazy. And so, yeah, you know, it doesn't even have to be, you know, situations like that. I think people just make stuff just so just. Man, you know, what do you do in a situation like that? Like, what do you do? Somebody tell you that your, your loved one's ashes in the damn lake because you cheated. Bitch, you need to get, girl, mm-mm, let me, mm, let me not say that, honey. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. So anyway. Okay, I think I don't think that was everything that I wanted to talk about. But yeah, so that Monique situation, um, it just made me like I said, it made me like I said, it made me want to talk about people who who get so fucking mad and just act out out of control and out of character. Don't get me wrong, we humans, you know. Sometimes that's the first thing we think to do is to we want to hurt, we want to hurt people, or whatever. When we get upset, especially if they hurt us, you know. Um, but sometimes you got to take a step back and you can't let your fucking anger get the best of you. We all one bad decision away from being dead or, you know what I'm saying? Being locked up, you know, just cause of one, like I said, one bad decision. Mm -mm. So anyway, all right, y'all, I think that's enough. For me tonight. I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. Turn this microphone off. And take my butt to bed. 
And um, y'all, I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to share this podcast and download and subscribe. And until next time, peace. All right, guys, that's a wrap. And once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Now, don't be stingy. Go ahead and share this podcast. And don't forget to follow on social media. Remember, you might get glad about what I said. Or you might get mad about what I said. Either way, I said what I said. Till next time, y'all take care. Bye.